Hello and welcome to MIP TV and t tonight or, or in this broadcast we are yeah. going to review, Bob's going to review one or if probably the most popular yeah. book in the yeah. history of psychotherapy. Would that be an understatement? I bet you when we mention the name of this book most people A will have heard of it and probably got it on their bookshelf. Yeah, absolutely. And that book is, Bob? Games People Play by Eric Byrne. Yeah, yeah. An absolute seminal book. And I did read somewhere that it remained in the top 100 books in, in I think it was a New York Times bestselling book, for, 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 for virtually 20 or 30 years. For a long time. For a long, long time. And I came across this book like, I'm okay, you're okay long before I was involved in counselling psychotherapy, long before it. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very popular book. And, you know, it's also very popular um, for couples. Ah. Because it looks at um, how couples' communication uh, gets confused, um, people get stuck in communication, um, how people pick partners, who've got interlocking games, um, interlocking scripts. And um, it goes through two or three games from a couple's perspective. So it, it's very useful for couples, very useful for social workers. Um, because, you see, in, in the 60s when this book came out, there wasn't much written in terms of looking at identifying patterns of behaviour. And social workers and earlier counsellors grabbed this book because it gave people a... Um, a tool book, if you like, a way of analysing behavioural patterns that people get caught up in, uh, in terms of mental health. Yeah, so for those people who, who, who are perhaps not involved in the world of counselling and psychotherapy and may have kind of just been looking at this video saying, well, what, what, what are games? What, what are they, Bob? What, what is, what's in communication and, and in kind of life? What type of games do people play, <laughs> and also okay. how do they? How how do you know we, How how do you know it's happening? Okay, now Sigmund Freud, who was the uh, sort of father of psychotherapy and psychoanalysis way back, he wrote many books. In you know, his first book was uh, called Hysteria in eighteen eighty eight. But here we are now in two thousand and seventeen. So he he, he term way back then called the compulsion to repeat and it was the compulsion to repeat behavioral patterns that we learned uh, in childhood as a way of getting our needs met um, and then Eric Byrne who was a devout follower of uh, Sigmund Freud before he changed uh, to the humanistic school really he uh, changed the name of compulsion to repeat to games so definition of games or a game is a series of repetitive behavioral patterns that you learn in childhood as an attempt to get your needs met. Yeah, and he gave them names, didn't he? Once, uh, I've got you, you son of a bitch. That was one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help. Basically, what, what he did, he looked over years and years and years of how people communicated uh, and looked at uh, behavioural patterns uh, that they, they adapted and looked at how other people locked into similar or different uh, patterns and he then uh, with uh, Claude Steiner and other early TA therapists uh, came up with three classifications of different types of behavioral patterns or games that we're talking about here and they were victim, victim games so that would be things like kick me or um, games which you would set up or behavioral patterns which you set, would set up to get um, kicked or to get put down or to get uh, discounted. Um, so those would be kit games like I'm only trying trying hard or a yes but or those would be victim games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you've got persecutor games, whole classification what we call persecutor games, which people set up to be persecuted. Or again, uh, we, we could go through a list of those games. And then we've got rescuer games. Uh, the, the compulsive caretakers, the other side of the codependency pattern, uh, you know, which uh, people would uh, play out patterns and attempt to uh, get taken care of, but actually 
um, or, or to take, sorry, the other way around, to take care of people, but from a discounted position. So you've got three different layers. We've got victims, games, rescuing games, and persecuted games. And by playing those games or those behavioral patterns, you get strokes. You get, in other words, you get uh, recognition. Yes. Um, but in fact, they didn't work. Well, they worked to a certain extent, but because they were from an unhealthy position, ostensibly, uh, they didn't actually get people what they wanted. No, I'm, I'm hearing you saying ver victim, persecutor, and rec rescue, my mind is wandering to, of course, the Cartman drama triangle, that idea uh, yeah. that literally, if you think of three chairs in a room formed That's in a right. triangle, <clears throat> if you choose to sit in one of those chairs and adapt those behaviours, then almost certainly you're inviting <clears throat> the people in the other two chairs to then play out this drama like they're players in a yeah. film. Yes. Very well described. Thank you. <laughs> no, I like that. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, that, dra that drama triangle became a classic way of analysing games. Mm. Yeah. And you see it all the time in, in uh, social situations, in psychotherapy rooms, uh, just as you've described it, where we invite people to either persecute us or rescue us from a discounted place or we end up a vulnerable victim position. Um, so that's a very good way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 always, I always thought that. It, it, is, it is literally, you know, like the opening of a theatre, you, you choose the chair, whichever chair it is, and mm. then as soon as you sit in that chair and start to act out that behaviour, then either of the other two chairs can be taken up and people will take that part and respond in that way. And as exactly. I've heard you say when I've watched your wonderful trainings, Bob, you step out of the triangle. You, you don't sit in the chair. <laughs> That's the way to cure. Yeah. Uh, but people do step, step into the chairs. And you must remember, these are psychological positions because in life from adults, you know, we've got persecutors, you know, and we've got rescuers and we've got, you know, we've got uh, victims. So I'm talking about psychological positions that people check, as you say, step into. Yes. And... The way out, of course, is to step out of the chair. But the first step is to be aware that you sat in the chair in the first place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to get out of the chair. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's something that, of course, happens in the arc of therapy, isn't it, where the, the therapist may reflect or, or share an observation about how you present yourself in certain, certain situations. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Because if you've been in a family of origin where let's say you had a, a significant other, whether it's mother, father, uncle, whoever, who was particularly strict and, um, you know, really, really get, only gave you recognition for stepping to the victim chair. Yes. Then in life, you know, probably later life, unless you've changed it, you will seek out from, uh, you know, usually in an out-of-awareness place, you know, uh, people to replicate that early dynamic of parent and child we're talking about, or persecutor and victim. Yeah, and you know, as 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 it's been recognised for a long time, in terms of attention, I would say we call it you would call it strokes. Yeah, Some yeah. sometimes a negative stroke um, is is better than no recognition at all. So absolutely, absolutely, we know that all research has shown that. Yeah, yeah, that sometimes people do negative behaviour to get attention but at least they're being recognized they, they might have to live with the consequences yeah. of the behavior yeah. and you know yeah. but we see that we see that sometimes in our clients historically you know sometimes maybe in ourselves as we we, we go through the arc of our own therapy yeah and of course if they go into that position they're usually in kick me games yes where they're inviting people to kick them for the escalation of the negative recognition yeah yeah and that, that links into the ain't it awful position, isn't it? Where then, yeah. then they can continue that by saying the world's a terrible place. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all those sort of things. So analysing these games, we can look at when people switch and move to different chairs in an attempt to um, get their payoff, if you like. Yeah. And we can look at how you can step outside these positions. So you come from, in TA, what you would call an adult adult position, instead of locked into persecuted victim or victim rescue yeah. position yeah it's yeah. such a seminal book i know we've gone off the track a little bit about about reviewing the book but 
it makes, it, as, as I said earlier, it seems to me when I read it, I didn't have any um, link into psychotherapy or counselling, but when I read it, it made so much sense. It, it, it was almost like the covenant of Burn, which was to, to make therapy and psychological ideas so accessible to, to the general mm. public. And I read it and I, I immediately think, oh, wow. You know, and I immediately started seeing these games in others. It was like the veil was lifted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the patterns. Yeah, yeah. So when you were in a persecutor, how you might look for victims, how you in victim position, look for rescuers. Yeah. Uh, and you would, uh, if you were, you know, in the therapy arc, of course, you would have um, tools to be able to help people uh, with awareness on how to not how to not take that chair, as you just said. Absolutely. But how to yes. actually look to get needs in a healthy way instead of those old repetitive patterns. Absolutely. It's it's such a seminal book. We could talk for hours on it, Bob, because sure. it is yeah. probably the most well-known of, so. of, of books. Um, mm. I, I was trying to think... I was trying to think of another, and the only one I can think of that's probably as well-known, maybe, is um, The Road Less Travel by M. Scott Peck. Oh, that's a good book. Yeah, but but in terms of you know mainstream, when you ask people, it's amazing how many people from a non-therapeutic background have read it, uh, and where it turns up, where it turns up in management training, it turns up in, yeah. in all sorts yeah. of, of disparate areas, yeah. Um, yeah. not connected with psychotherapy. A wonderful read, useful for students. Wonderful for students, because if we, I'll say it again. I think I've said this on many times on different videos. It's the four major tenets or platform of classical transaction analysis is ego stakes, scripts, you know, uh, games, and transaction analysis proper. So an understanding of how we repeat uh, patterns from our own history and how we seek out players to replicate you know, these patterns and how we can change those patterns and come from an adult healthy position it's crucial for any student to read. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm going to be kind of bold here. I would say even if you're not doing a TA course, I think yeah. it's, I think if you're doing a person-centred or a CBT or an integrative course or the many different okay. modalities, I think, I think that it should, it should be on your shelf or on your reading list because mm. it tells us a, an existential truth about the human condition. Oh, absolutely, I 100% agree with you. And a wonderful book for our 21st book. It is. So, as always, Bob doesn't get paid for <laughs> reviewing these books. I think, I think he should because, no. because he does such a good job. Um, we'll put a link in the, in, the, in the description bar below so you can click on, you can inspect the book if you want to buy a copy. Um, mm. I got mine, I think, from temp, for 10p 10 off eBay or something. It's such a widely, yeah. widely accepted yeah. book. If you want a pristine copy, you can go to the big booksellers. Um, and we'll put a picture at the end of a picture of the book so people know what it looks like. And as always, Bob Cook, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, not only in the literature, but also in the practice of counselling and psychotherapy. Thank you. Thank you, Roy.